Hey, future family. Um, it is Sunday night, and you might be thinking, why are we doing story time? But it's technically a school night. And I'm also outside because I want to introduce you to my pup. Her name is Gracie. Can you sit, girl? And she is a Border Collie. And Border Collies come from an island called Scotland. And you might see them in Ireland and other places around there. But one of the things you might know Border Collies for is their Frisbees. They love to play Frisbee. And this is Gracie's Frisbee. And I'm not going to be able to throw it very well and hold the phone. But I'm going to toss it. You see her. She's going for it. But we're going to toss it out there. And let's see. Oh! I don't know if y'all got that or not, but she caught it. We're teaching her to try to catch them. She'll be a year old next month. So I wanted to bring this story to you because it's a super cool book. And you might think, what in the world is this hanging out of here? But it is Sheep's Wool. And so we're going to read this book called A Visit to Working Sheepdogs. All right. And it came from Scotland. It was a gift to my daughter from her grandmother, her great-grandmother. Actually, they went on a trip to Scotland and they brought this back. So I thought this would be a cool story. And tomorrow for social studies, if you can find a map or a globe, see if you can find where Scotland is. And you'll see where some of these cool sheep dogs like Gracie live. Okay. And they obviously herd sheep. Okay. So let's get started. But it says, A Visit to Working Sheepdogs. And it's written and illustrated by Glennis Ross. Molly and Tristan could barely contain their excitement as their car drove up the farm road. We're here, exclaimed Mom as the car pulled to a stop. The children quickly jumped out of the car and made their way across the car park and down a grassy hill to find a rock to sit upon. So there they are at the sheep farm. It's the Leewalt Farms, uh, the Leewalt Farm. Welcome to Leewalt Farms working sheepdog demonstrations. The shepherd welcomed the family to the farm. He put his fingers to his lips and gave a shrill whistle. All at once, 10 beautiful border collies came running onto the field and over to the shepherd, where they were in turn introduced to the children. So on this farm are 10 working border collies. And this is a real farm, a real place in Scotland. There was Tam and Spot, Jim and Meg, Moss and Wynn, Craig and Cap, Ben and Glenn. The shepherd began to whistle and the dogs all moved like dancers in a perfectly choreographed routine. Each dog responding to his own individual whistle commands only. So each dog has their own whistle that they listen for and they know that means they're supposed to go herd a certain sheep. Isn't that amazing? They're super smart dogs. If a dog didn't obey precisely as he should, he was promptly corrected with a sharp, I'm warning ye from the shepherd. Yikes, they have to make sure they're doing just right. The children were interested to learn that the dogs are taught voice commands before they are given their individual whistle commands. To make a dog run to the right around the sheep, the shepherd used the words, away to me. And to make a dog run to the left around the sheep, he used the voice command, come by. So they know that away to me means to go to the right. And to go to the left, you have to say, come by. So they know that the difference between those two phrases, one means go right and one means go left. The children sat in wonder as the dogs gathered up a group of sheep from the field and then arranged themselves in a perfect circle around the flock. One by one, the shepherd called the dogs to heel and they lay closely side by side, the slight Meg squeezing in tight to fill any small space available. They remained in tight, oh, excuse me, they remained perfectly still while completely focused on the sheep they were facing. So look at them all in there together looking at those sheep. Those sheep know that, hey, we might get bit if we move. So they are staying right there and that's the shepherd. Then sheep, 
The sheep then moved off to the far end of the field while the shepherd whistled the dogs into position in a long line. The children sat up eagerly waiting to see what was next to come. Another whistle from the shepherd sent Jim racing out to gather the straying sheep. He rounded them up in no time, then proceeded to weave them in and out of the line of dogs until the sheep were back in front of the shepherd. The other dogs remained lying down as the sheep were shifted right around them. So what do you think those little dashed lines might mean? I think it shows you where the doggies have been or where the sheep went through, maybe. Pretty cool. Mally and Tristan were thrilled. The shepherd continued on giving training tips as the dogs carried out his every command with exact precision or if not, were reminded with another, I'm warning ye. Look, this is pretty cool. This is the shepherd's staff or the crook, you might say, that he carries. Made out of hazelwood and tup horn is what it says. At last, the shepherd used his crook, so it's a crook, to hook a sheep around its neck. So that's why it's curved like that at the top. He can grab a sheep and pull him back like he, if he needs to. The shepherd shook the sheep close to the children and they got took the sheep, excuse me. The shepherd took the sheep close to the children and they got to see how the shepherd sheared the wool off the sheep using old-fashioned hand shears. And even better, they got to try shearing the sheep themselves. So this is the tool that they would use to cut the wool. There they are. And this page is where we got, they brought back a piece of the sheep's wool. Isn't that cool? It's so soft. It's really soft. Mally beamed at Tristan as they were each handed a small bit of wool that they had so cleverly sheared off the sheep themselves. So there they are shearing the sheep. So shearing is a synonym for cutting, all right, or shaving you might say. Next, the ducks were brought out and the children were able to see how the border collies will work with the ducks in the same manner as they work the sheep. The shepherd put a strange flat whistle, which he called a traditional shepherd's whistle, into his mouth and made several quick whistling sounds all together. Tristan called out to Mally in delight as six puppies came running past through his legs and straight over to the shepherd, still sounding the whistle. So the little puppies are going to come out now, and they're using a whistle to listen. Then, unbelievably, two of the wee pups took off after the ducks, working the ducks just as the big dogs had been doing. The shepherd explained how herding is such a natural instinct for border collies that even pups as young as six weeks old can be seen to show the collie eye and style on the ducks. Sometimes we'll see Gracie do that. She gets down in this hutch and she'll start moving like that. So I think that's part of their natural instinct. And you've probably learned about animal instincts before. Mally had scooped up a pup and was cuddling the sweet baby close to her cheek when the shepherd handed Tristan a bottle of milk. Before Tristan could ask, what's this for? He heard a, he heard a loud, bah! what do you think it's for? I think it's for the sheep. A group of hungry pet lambs came running towards him. He fed the bottle to the first lamb that reached him and it greedily sucked the milk within seconds. Luckily, the shepherd had an entire bucket full of bottles for the lambs, so everyone got a turn to feed them and the hungry lambs were satisfied at last. So all those little baby lambs wanted milk. So the brother and sister who were visiting the farm got to feed them. Wouldn't that be cool? Mally and Tristan were having such a special time playing with the wee pups and visiting with the big dogs that when their mom said it was time to leave, they were ever so disappointed. Please, oh please, may we stay longer, they implored. But it was time for the dogs to get fed and rested, so the children had to reluctantly leave. They each got their very own shepherd's whistle to take home to practice how to make a proper whistle sound. So next summer holidays, when they come back to working sheepdogs, maybe, just maybe, Mally and Tristan will be whistling up the team and giving a demonstration of their own. 
So those are some cool whistles. I think I might should invest in a shepherd's whistle. Maybe that could help train our pup. And there they are, Tristan and Mally, leaving. And then if you look down in the corner, there's a picture of them on their real trip. That's them actually. And then the illustrator, who's actually the author too, their picture of them. And that's the end. And here are some pictures. This book would be a um, nonfiction book because it's a true story. Even though they drew pictures to, dim to sh make the book, it is based off real life events. So there they are on their real trip with the real pups. And this farm has been around since 1993. So it's uh, like say 27 years old, all right? So super cool, hopefully you enjoyed visiting with these sheep dogs on the farm and getting to meet our little sheep dog, Gracie. Come here, girl. Say goodbye to everybody. Say bye-bye. Oh, she's looking for her Frisbee. Say it's her most favorite thing. She's always after it. Okay, guys, don't forget, tomorrow's Monday. If you are kinder through second grade, you can come pick up a packet. And there's also meals being delivered, okay? We hope y'all have a great night, and we'll be communicating through with you this week. All right? Bye, guys.